Hello and welcome to this webinar about reapplying for a Princess Royal Training Award brought to you by the City and Guilds Group. Delighted that you've been able to join us today and thank you very much for choosing to reapply for one of the awards. I'm Michael Osbald Eston from the City and Guilds Group and I'm joined by Paul Robertson, the Chief Assessor for the Princess Royal Award. So welcome Paul. Hello everybody. And just on the housekeeping, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a column which allows you to ask questions or to email questions to us. And it will also allow you, during the course of the webinar, to download material which you might find useful for the application. So that's the column on the right-hand side. Do please email your questions to us. We'll pick them up either during the course of the webinar or more probably at the end of the webinar when we finish speaking to you. But uh, we are delighted that you've, um, that you've been able to join us today. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to tell you a little bit about a few changes in the 2017 Princess Royal Training Awards. They're not major, but they're uh, in important. We want to share them with you. We're going to share our suggestions as to how to um, develop your applications to make them into successful applications. We're going to talk a little bit, or Paul is, about how, the, how making the evidence work for you um, would be effective. And we are going to uh, share some top tips, um, which the Chief Assessor is going to offer to you during the course of the webinar. And of course, as I said before, we are going to take your questions and your answers. And, and. So, what hasn't changed in 2017? is that the three hallmarks are exactly the same. So the first hallmark is that training and learning and development is integral to your business performance, that the program that you've designed to address a particular business need is delivered efficiently and effectively, and that finally and probably most importantly, that the program has an impact on the success of your organization and its people. We have got a slight change in terms of the evidence that you can attach and the first thing to note is that this year we're limiting the amount of evidence to one document per hallmark. Um, that document can only be two megabytes and the maximum of 500 words per attachment. So that's to enable us to have a level, a level playing field. Uh, last year we found that some people attached an enormous amount of material, some of which was relevant and some of which wasn't. So this year we decided we'd, um, we'd reduce that down to one document which you need to put together for us as evidence and Paul will talk about that a little later on, that it has a maximum size of two megabytes and a limited number of words on it. So that, that's what hasn't, that's what has changed that, that, about the evidence. So moving on to um, another slight change, and this is in response to feedback from our applicants last year. In Hallmark 1, Part 1, that's the strategic approach, we've increased the words from 250 to 300 words. But we've reduced the words in the Part 2 of that section, which is called Towards a Sustainable Learning Culture, from 250 to 200. So we've repurposed the number of words and the way that they split across Hallmark 1. As I say, that was very much in response to comments we had from applicants, and we like to try and take them into account when we can. We have to limit the number of words because otherwise we never be able to assess it, but we recognize that that first section uh, requires a little more weight than the second one. So moving on a little bit, um, Paul, would you like to tell us a little bit about what else has changed in 2017? Oh, thank you, Michael. Yes. In terms of Hallmark 1, uh, one thing that you'll have seen in your feedback is some observation or comment about measurable objectives. What we're looking for very clearly, and part of the repurposing of the questions, is to give you enough space to tell us why uh, your learning and development initiative takes place. We had a number of entries and applications where the applicant explained what they did, but not why they did it. So we're saying, please tell us why and also what will success look like because part of making uh, the process if you remember the hallmarks clear is that we can see the links between what you set out to achieve i.e. your success measures and what you actually do achieve in terms of hallmark three um, let me say now and I'll say it a, a number of times I think if you find it important you need to see your application holistically it's not three separate pieces of paper with hallmark information on. It's a holistic application 
We need to see the, the link between what you set out to do and what you actually achieved. In terms of measurable objectives, there aren't any best ones. Uh, it could be increased sales, uh, it could be you're defending a market position, it could be skill shortage, it could be uh, if you're a social enterprise doing something in terms of the community. But we need to know what success looks like. How will you know at the point where your learning and development program is delivering, that it's delivering what you want? Um, the audit trail, as, as in the jargon, looks at the link between Hallmark 1 to Hallmark 2 to Hallmark 3, but also looks at the link between Hallmark 1 and Hallmark 3, what you set out to achieve and what you actually delivered. So again, uh, for us, vitally important in the uh, assessment process. Thank you, Paul. Now, one of the other slight changes we've had is in Hallmark 2. We've replaced health and safety, which, of course, everybody ascribes to, and, and, and you know, that, that's something which everybody has to, to think about. Whatever program they're doing or whatever the work they're doing, uh, health and safety has to be an element of it. We've replaced that with equality, diversity, and inclusion, or EDI, as it's known. Now, the reason for doing that is that we know an awful lot of businesses are focusing this year on equality, diversity, and inclusion. And so we've developed an, an additional commendation. If you achieve a Princess Royal Training Award, and the work that you've done has been specifically towards equality, diversity, and inclusion, then we'll give an additional commendation for that work. So it's not to say that the Princess Royal Training Awards are only about EDI, but it is to say that where an organization, a company, achieves one of our awards, one of the awards, and, and they have a focus on EDI, there is an additional commendation to recognize that very special nature of their commitment to equality, diversity, and inclusion. It's not a defining criteria. It's an additional opportunity, uh, but it's an important one in terms of how we're looking at the awards here in 2017. Paul, what's, uh, what's happened? What's, the, what's Hallmark 3.2 criteria uh, explaining to us? Um, it was a semantic issue, which uh, unfortunately caused problems for applicants. Uh, we had the word individuals in terms of impact on individuals and a number of applicants said it's quite difficult to give you comprehensive views of uh, what got so many people that uh, giving you a, an individual perspective doesn't really help. So quite rightly we've changed it to people so it's a broad church in terms of evidence but use, use, obviously use things like case studies and examples in terms of individuals to lighten and enliven the, the application. The, um, a couple of things that I think uh, go with this is making sure that um, you give us the big picture with mini case studies to try and keep it all together. Thank you, Paul. That, that, that's thank you very much indeed. That's that's really helpful. And um, again, I suppose it reflects the, the the fact that if we get feedback and and if we can make the application form um, more understandable or easier to 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 refer to and to relate to, then we welcome that feedback because that's how we improve it. So I think that's that's a really useful clarification. So moving on to our suggestions, um, Paul, what are your best suggestions for people who are reapplying in 2017 and, and what, what sort of things um, would you be looking for as Chief Assessor? Well, there's, there's two lots. Uh, one is uh, this information, we'll talk this through, and also the, the top tips to keep you on your toes till the end of the webinar. <laughs> the, um, the, the start point is um, your application and the feedback. We provided feedback in relation to the, uh, each of the hallmarks. And, and one of the important things, we tried to give a clear view of, of the strengths as well as gaps or areas where greater clarity would have been helpful. So as you look at the feedback from 2016, remember, as they say, to keep the good stuff, uh, provide the evidence to support it, as well as uh, hopefully respond to the feedback we provided about ways in which you could uh, strengthen the application. The, um, in some cases, the gaps are ones of emphasis rather than content. And if I give an example, we have a, an applicant who uh, in 2016 sent an application in, in relation to their training center, and they occupy a, a unique place in a, an industry setting. And their training center is delivering all sorts of really good stuff. What they didn't tell us was why they were investing a million pounds in this particular facility. So taking it a stage further, it says if you 
are in some way training third parties, you need to show us the training, and development, and learning you provide for your employees. So it's not a provider award as such. You can use success criteria uh, from your customers, your end users, as a way of demonstrating excellence. But the, the core of the application has to be around the development of your own staff. Uh, the, the planner is essential. One of the, the problems is, as I said, you, you, you know too much rather than too little. Uh, the planner helps you see your application holistically and also the links between each of the, the parts of the application between the different hallmarks. It also hopefully will hold you back from um, jumping onto the computer and starting to fill in an application form. Um, you know too much, you've got too much information, it needs to be honed and made as precise as you can make it in the limited words that we provide you with. So every word really matters. The application planner is uh, a key piece of, of documentation and we know on occasion people don't make best use of it so please if you haven't downloaded it and Michael will give you an exhortation as well please do because it also shows you the criteria and scoring system the assessors work to very clear guidelines when they are reviewing an application and we're looking for consistency in um, assessment and we tell you what the criteria are and the scoring system that's being used uh, throughout the whole of the process. So there's nothing hidden, there's no, everything is transparent, as transparent as we can make it. So if you've got questions, please talk to the City Guilds team, or if it's something technical, I'm very happy to help and provide clarification as well. Michael, over to you. Yes, thank you very much indeed, Paul. And, and uh, here is the, uh, the more than a suggestion. It is please download the application planner if you haven't already done so, because it does provide the best possible support to ensure that the application is um, as good as it possibly can be. It explains the criteria and scoring, as Paul said, and it helps. It helps you, I think, structure the narrative and allows you to plan your answers. And we'll be talking more about that as we go through the the, the, the webinar. And of course, the other thing that it does, and again, we'll come on to this afternoon, is gives examples of the sort of evidence that really supports the best possible application. So the application planner is, is a critical document, so please use it. So moving along to evidence, because evidence is really important for the assessors. Paul, how, how do you make the evidence work for you as an applicant? Um, the word that you'll hear now and again and again is relevance. We had uh, an application last year with, I think, 38 PowerPoint presentations on the basis that the applicant thought the assessor could look at them all and decide which bits were relevant. It, it honestly doesn't work like that. So it's very much a case of avoiding a shotgun approach, making your uh, evidence targeted to assertions and comments and claims which you make within your application. Um, we do need support uh, evidence when you're saying that you, things have improved or got better or you've achieved what, something uh, through your, uh, your investment. So it is about providing us with a link between the assertion and the evidence. And again, it's recognizing and it's a discipline. If you can pull out a key phrase or a, a key point from um, a report, for example, that's all we need. We don't need all the detail. We just need to know that um, Ofsted graded you at whatever, or you won an award in your industry because. So it, it provides us with some some um, headline which allows us a validation to dig into it with you. The other thing is to make sure that the evidence is coherent. Uh, sometimes we get lots and lots of bullet points saying we've achieved all of these awards uh, or achievements or commendations. And in all honesty, uh, unless we uh, contact you, which we won't do, we wouldn't understand them. So pick pick example, examples and exemplars of you demonstrating true excellence and true achievement. Uh, but also recognize that the assessors and the commissioners are not necessarily an expert in your particular field. So therefore make sure the process of communicating to them, because this is a communication document, is as transparent as you can make it. Thank you, Paul. And, and if I can just uh, remind uh, folk who are on the webinar, if you have questions to ask, then please type them into the box on the right-hand side of the screen and send them to us, and we'll pick them up and we'll answer them 
uh, at the end of the webinar. So you'll see a box on the right hand side of the screen which gives you the chance to ask questions directly to Paul. We will of course be giving you contact details if you want to talk to us later on. So selecting the right evidence is just as important, isn't it, Paul? So in terms of selecting the right evidence so that you can make the most of it, what's, what are your best bits of advice on that? Um, the obvious things, to be honest, are av avoiding complex jargon. Uh, again, because uh, you're working with something that you know a lot about because you're the expert, it's sometimes easy to assume that everybody else understands your shorthand and experiences. So without dumbing down your application, make sure the communication process is clear. Um, as I said before, know when to stop. We only need um, examples and exemplars. Sometimes there's, to be honest, a lot of verbiage in an application that adds nothing because the words are so general and generic. Uh, they're very positive, but they don't provide us with any real measurable or tangible evidence of excellence or achievement. So generalities, to be honest, don't cut it uh, without some support in terms of your evidence. The thing that goes with the the um, evidence is it needs to reinforce and excite in the sense that wow, it, you go wow when you read it. It shows that what you set out to achieve, you've actually done. That you've got the, the stats, you've got the documentation, you've got the feedback from customers, you've got whatever it is that says, wow, this is really, really exciting and interesting. If you read your application and you're bored with it, then we will be as well. So it, it is about bringing the application to, to life. It's something hopefully you're very proud of and your organization's proud of. And we'd like to recognize it, but, but avoid the uh, writing it as a funding bid. It, it's not. It, it's a declaration of what you've achieved or what you're achieving as an organization, something that you're proud of. So make sure that we understand that. I think that idea of bringing it to life um, is really important, Paul. The passion that we want to read is, is, is fundamental to it. Um, and, and the, the awards are very much about recognizing excellence, and, tr and, and we want to recognize excellence and share excellence. We don't want to trip people up. We really do want to enable people to be successful. But one of the things I've underlined in that slide is that don't forget to reference there is evidence in the text. So if there's evidence attached, then please just make reference to it so the assessor can find it easily and know, knows where to go to it. So in, you, ter that's helpful. Yeah. in, in terms of the, the do's and don'ts, Paul, what, what's your, what are your basic do's when it comes to evidence? Um, well, it's about, uh, as you say, re relevance. But if it's you've succeeded, tell us you've succeeded, tell us that you've achieved, and then provide us some evidence to support that. It's um, also about keeping focused. The, we need to know why the evidence is there. Uh, as Michael said, cross-reference it. But also, again, come back to thinking and observing and reviewing your application holistically. Where does it fit? It might fit in a couple of parts of, of the application terms of hallmarks. So, so give us a view where the evidence fits and, and how it's used. Um, sometimes applications are the equivalent of um, trust us uh, and come and validate. We've got loads of good stuff for you to see. The reality is that the application is a closed box. So anything that isn't within the application in some form is not eligible for a validation visit. The assessor won't add bits in that you didn't provide. So it, it's recognizing the discipline that goes with making sure that your application has the evidence that makes it as entire and robust as you can make it in itself, rather than relying on um, a validation visit to make it work. I think that's really useful, Paul. And of course, with with do's there are always don'ts. So, what would you what would you underline on the don't front? Um, make every word count. The again, I think the suggestion would be go back to your 2016 uh, application. Quite often. There are comments and observations in there which are background rather than foreground. Uh, context is always really important to us, but sometimes the applicant provides too much context, not enough content. So focus very much on the evidence approach. What we're looking for is what you set out to do, what you did, and what you've achieved, and provide us with 
evidence to support those three elements, but also show how they link together. The, um, as I say, the the shame, I think, is uh, it's a sadness rather than an embarrassment. The shame sometimes is that as we read an application, something that c occurs in Hallmark 1 as a comment appears again in Hallmark 2 as a slightly differently worded uh, observation or view. Recognize that you need to see the application holistically, but every word has to matter. Uh, one thing we'll touch on a bit later, it's, it's not, this is not a bland corporate communications document. This is selling your pride and achievement in a very limited box in terms of application evidence. The, uh, it's also important to remember, as Michael touched on, that the assessor's job isn't to sort through all the evidence and see if it's relevant. It's your job to say, this is relevant to this, and it provides us with, uh, as I said in the uh, beginning, the audit trail. We're looking for the connections where you have a successful organization and a learning program. We need to see how the learning program has contributed to organizational success. Because sometimes we have a view of successful organization and learning development, but there's nothing that says that this led to this. So we're looking for relevance, we're looking for taught language uh, in terms of a, a bit of discipline in recognizing that some of the, the nice things to say are not all that helpful when you are constrained by the word count. Very good advice too, Paul. <clears throat> Just to remind people that um, evidence is limited this year to one document per hallmark, two megabytes uh, per attachment, and 500 words maximum on that attachment. So the, th the thing that we would, we would encourage you not to do is to attach lots of photographs because they very rarely add ex anything, nor can we follow external links and that's again quite important. Um, the assessors won't have the capacity to, to link through to other websites or to other information. Um, reference it in the hallmark, reference it into the attachment, but don't don't uh, don't add the photographs and, and other things. Make every every word count, as Paul said. So Paul, going on to ev examples of evidence. Um, there's, there's certainly supporting it within the application planner. There's all sorts of uh, useful tips there. But um, what sort of things really work for assessors, Paul? What, what are the things that assessors are looking for, particularly when it comes to the attachments of evidence? Well, as you say, avoid the grip and grin photos. Um, but we're interested in, uh, it says business metrics, but we're talking about organizational metrics. Because, uh, again, some of the organizations that apply have different parameters of what success looks like. But we're looking for definitive information. Um, if it's uh, straightforward, it could be sales or profitability or reduced staff turnover. It could be uh, increased um, credibility with a particular market segment. It could be uh, your organization has impacted on something in a local community. It doesn't really matter what it is, but we need evidence of it. So give us it as tangibly as possible. Charts and graphs and statistics are really helpful. The thing to avoid is a percentage without a baseline. So if you tell us things are 5% better, is that good, bad, or indifferent? Because without a baseline, we don't know whether it's absolutely wonderful and amazing, or do we yawn when we read it? So, so give us something that which makes the, the metrics, the numbers, uh, the pictures, not, not graphic pictures, but pictures of the business performance or organizational performance, that we can use. And, and ideally, you've got quantifiable and comparative. So before and after, at the point where you invested in this initiative, what was it like? What's it like now? Well, we've grown sales dramatically over this piece, and here are some clear reasons as to how we've done that. Um, testimonials from staff and customers are, are really important. And uh, again, it's about relevance, that um, something that says, this company is wonderful, doesn't actually do an awful lot for your application. If a, a customer says this company is wonderful because of they have highly trained staff who've done whatever and can demonstrate your learning program has impacted on skills within your organization, then that's really helpful. And again, it's a headline. We don't want, you haven't got space for long customer testimonials. But, but pick out the pieces that really say, wow. You know, we, we like to be impressed. There are some applications in 2016 that when we read them, 
they send a shiver up your spine because you go, wow. And others where you say, oh, it's, it's almost there, but if it only. And, and so what we're trying to do with this session, but other sessions as well, is to make sure that there's lots more uh, shivers up your spine than if only. I think that's really important, Paul, and, and I think that shiver up the spine. Last night, uh, one of the successful companies um, was delivering to a group of employers in Northern Ireland, and the feedback was that the shiver definitely ran up the spine, and people were enormously motivated about hearing about what that particular company had done and the impact of the awards that it had on them in terms of people looking, um, going to their website, applying for jobs there and a whole range of other benefits. So let's have that wow factor. Don't forget please to use the application planner and it, that is really such a critical document. Now Paul, we've come to the, the bit that you alluded to earlier on which are your top tips as a chief assessor. Now you've been, you've been assessing awards of all sorts of different sorts for many years and you and I have worked together a long time. Um, you've gathered together an awful lot of very good top tips so do you want to share them with us today? I'll give it a best shot Michael. I, th I think the, the, the first thing is to remember that your application is a communications document. It's not a report, it's a communications document. And what you want to do is impress appropriately, using the criteria, the assessors enough for us to want to come and validate your application. So uh, and within the group, uh, there's at least one of you, maybe two from the applications I've looked at. You are over modest in your application. This, this is about, without getting into hype, selling your success. And, and sometimes when you're very close to what you do, it becomes business as usual, and you forget how exciting and interesting and innovative and whatever it was at the beginning. So it, it is about um, giving us uh, a clear communication of what you believe is really good at what you're doing. Um, it's in terms of excellence. Well, it, again, it, it's avoiding the falling into the trust as validation will fill it all in for you. We need some tangible and relevant measures and successes. The assessors will always look at an application in context. And what that means is we recognize quite clearly that for some organizations, measurables are more difficult to achieve than for others. However, it doesn't excuse you in not trying. So. The, it's really difficult to measure, we can't really do that, but gives an award anyway. It doesn't cut it with the, the assessors. If you say, this is our surrogate measure, this is how we measure and recognize our success, this is how other people have recognized it on, on our behalf, this is fine. Give us some way of looking at the credibility and achievements of your application. Um, avoid the, um, the problem that occurs with online applications. Uh, there are two things with this. First of all, people will apply and see each of the pages as separate documents. You must see it as a holistic document. The application is, needs to be seen in the round so that you can see the links between your Hallmark 1, which is why Hallmark 2, what you did, Hallmark 3, what's been achieved. You know, a clear view. We're seeing the audit trail, the links between them. And it's also avoiding, if you're in a large corporate particularly, avoiding the blandness that goes through um, multiple uh, individuals and sometimes corporate communications departments, I need to be careful what I say, uh, taking an application and taking the excitement and energy uh, out of it, it becomes blander as people tweak it. They add a, a, an odd word change here, an odd word change there. In all honesty, don't add anything to the application, but take away a lot of the vibrancy and energy and excitement and pride that was in the application at the beginning. So again, it's, it's about recognizing that it's a communication document, it's a sales document. Make it sing for you. If it sings for you, it sings for us. If it's boring, then it's going to be uh, more difficult for us to assess. The, the box. Um, if there isn't, if it doesn't, if it's not in the box, it doesn't exist. And what that means in real terms, the assessors, as it says at the bottom of the slide, can dig because you've given us a, a quote or a hint of something, uh, but they can't fish. They can't come along and you suddenly produce lots of additional information, and 
create a situation where uh, they essentially have to rewrite or would have to rewrite your application. Again, brief ex extracts and quotations are really helpful. Make sure they're meaningful um, rather than uh, the equivalent of uh, th this program changed my life, which you may well have done, and I'm not being trite about it, but it needs to be added to by saying, this program changed my life because I am now more competent and can do whatever. So it's always about the application of learning rather than just the bland statement. So we're always looking for proof of um, application all the way through. That's really and I think that's it really. There's, there's lots more uh, you'll find in the application planner, which I think really is important to read. Um, it doesn't communicate itself to you telepathically, so at some point work with it. Uh, it really will help. Michael, over to you. Yeah, I think that's that's really good. Thank you for that, Paul. The, 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 the other top tip I would add, and, and those who, who remember Sally doing the webinar last year when she said, go and drag somebody off the street to read your application form, I think it's really useful to ask somebody who's not been involved in putting the application form together at all to read it and then reflect back. Um, certainly when we've, we, we've worked together here as a team, um, and, you, and you work at a piece of a, a document over and over again, you, you read into it what you want to read into it, not necessarily what's there. So getting somebody totally disconnected, husband, wife, partner, lover, whoever it might be, to read the application form and reflect back to you is a really valuable thing to do because that gives that independence of, of overview. Now, we're, we're moving towards the end of the webinar now, and um, I said we, we repeat that we are here to help, that the team here and... Uh, Remy sat with me, she's been looking after the technology and Julie has been making sure that we've been behaving ourselves on the webinar too. So they are here to answer questions either by email or by phone and you can ring them on those numbers uh, whenever you need to get that information. There are other webinars that we planned on the 28th of February and on the 8th of March. And those two webinars, one will be a general webinar to so we'll bring together uh, people who've not applied for the awards in the past. The second one on the 8th of March is specifically about evidence, and we'll have one of the other assessors with us, the Deputy Chief Assessor with us on that occasion to help um, delve a bit more deeply into what evidence can look like. But do please use the, you know, the team here, use Paul and his team to help you build the most effective application that you can possibly do. We've, we've had one question, which is, and what's the closing date this year? And the closing date is the 31st of March. So you have until the end of March to get your application in to, to us. If you have any difficulty at all in submitting your application, please drop us an email at the help at princessroyaltrainingawards.com or ring one of the team here. Um, the other thing is that when we get your application, we will email you back to tell you we've received it. And if you don't hear back from us within 48 hours of sending it to us, for goodness sake, please get back in touch with us to find out what's happened. Um, this year, because it's an online assessment, we, 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 we can actually see when those applications are coming in. But if you think you should have heard from us and you haven't heard from us, then please get in touch with us and remind us. And we no problem at all. We'd rather people do that um, rather than miss out on, on the opportunity. So it only runs to me now to thank Paul very much. Paul, thank you for your expertise. Thank you for it's, your guidance. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, it, it's one of those situations where we, we really want to uh, catch applicants doing things right rather than catch them doing things wrong. So anything we do to help. Uh, very often, as I say, we are quite clear from some of the evidence in the application. It has tremendous merit, but somehow it just fell through the cracks. And We're trying to help, help make sure this year this doesn't happen again. Yes, thank you very much, Paul. And, and if you if you want to um, listen to this uh, webinar again, then it will go onto our website, and we will be making it available to people. So, uh, as indeed will all the webs all the webinars, we put them all on the website. Um, there are case studies from last year which are well worth looking at on on the Princess Royal website. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we wish you not good luck in many ways with your application. You don't need good luck because we know you've all got really good stories to tell. And we look forward to seeing those stories. And we look forward to hopefully celebrating with you when you achieve one of the Princess Royal Training Awards this year. So on behalf of the team here at the Sitting Hills Group, on behalf of Paul and the assessment team, uh, can I wish you all a very good day and thank you for joining us today. Thank you.